Hello everyone, welcome back to Comment Made Easy and I hope you all are doing very well. Before we begin, let me remind my dear students that the contents of this channel are only to supplement your knowledge, not to replace the regular online and offline classes in your institution. So please attend your classes and do not miss them. Also, if you like our contents, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, like the videos and share these videos with your friends, with your batchmates, with your juniors. Also, if you are a teacher, then with your students. Please follow our Facebook page and the link will be given in the description. Today's topic of discussion is Lepra reaction, which is also known as leprosy reaction. Now, what is a Lepra reaction? It is the immunologically mediated episodes of acute or subacute inflammatory reaction that occurs during the course of the disease. We have to remember that lepra reaction occurs in some cases of leprosy, but it can also occur with other type of uh, mycobacterial infection. For example, mycobacterium tuberculosis that causes tuberculosis and also non-tubercular mycobacterium, etc. Now, why is it important to recognize lepra reaction early in the course of the disease? That is because lepra reaction can cause peripheral nerve damage and this peripheral nerve damage can contribute to the disability in the course of the disease. We all know about the disability that occurs in leprosy. So if we can identify this lepra reaction very early and can initiate the management, then we can also avoid the nerve damage and also avoid the disability to some extent. So that is why it is very important that we identify the lepra reaction early in its course. When does lepra reaction occur? We have to understand that only 30 to 40 percent, I should not say only because it is a, a quite a big number. So uh, in 30 to 40 percent of the leprosy patients, lepra reaction can occur and it can develop at any point uh, during the course of the disease. So it can occur at the onset of the disease, before starting the treatment, during the treatment and even after completion of the treatment. So it is very difficult to say when the lepra reaction will begin, if it begins at all. People with certain features are more likely to develop lepra reaction. So you can say these are somewhat the risk factors uh, or some factors or variables which are associated with uh, lepra reaction. So if there are multiple lesions, number one, lesions shows to the peripheral nerve uh, that predisposes to neuritis lesions on the face, people will nerve thickening with or without uh, functional impairment. So there is nerve thickening, uh, there may or may not be any functional impairment because of that nerve involvement. Pregnancy, puberty, these two are the periods when there is uh, hormonal change in the body. Also alcohol intake, psychological stress, all these uh, situations put a person at risk to develop lepra reaction. What are the different types of lepra reaction? If you are talking about the principal types of lepra reaction, there are mainly type 1 lepra reaction and type 2 re reaction, but there is also another thing called Lucio phenomena, which is quite uncommon, not very common, but uh, it occurs. What is type 1 lepra reaction? This is also known as reversal reaction and may occur in both possibacillary and multibacillary leprosy. There is also type 2 lepra reaction, which is also known as erythema nodosum leprosum ENL and occurs in my uh, multibacillary leprosy only. Th as I said, there is something called Lucio phenomena where a type of cutaneous vasculitis tend to affect people not taken the multidrug therapy regularly. So this is a cutaneous vasculitis and it presents as odd shaped red patches and ulcers on hand, feet, wrist and ankle. It is associated with fever, arthritis, liver and kidney disease. We shall talk about all these individual types in details next. Type 1 lepra reaction also known as reversal reaction. What is the mechanism? The mechanism is delayed type of hypersensitivity. So delayed hypersensitivity reaction. How does it occur? It occurs due to antigen from broken bacilli reacting with the T lymphocytes resulting in the alteration of cell mediated immunity or CMI. So that is the mechanism. I am not going into details about the mechanism uh, because uh, that is beyond the scope of this video. Um, 
but this is the basic mechanism where the antigen coming from the broken bacilli they interact with the T lymphocyte and that causes the alteration in the CMI and because of that delayed type of hypersensitivity reaction occur. It may occur all of a sudden and may be repeated episodes. So there can be repeated episodes and this can occur acutely all of a sudden. Now it occurs in patients with borderline diseases that means borderline tuberculoid, borderline disease as well as borderline leptomastus, leprosy. So these three types of uh, leprosy cases the lepra 1 reaction is quite common and sometimes what happens the existing patch that means the skin patches which are already existing they become raised erythematous that means uh, they become reddish and edematous ulceration can also occur in case of intense reaction so we have to remember that in type 1 lepra reaction the existing patches change and they become raised or erythematous as well as edematous and sometimes ulceration can also occur neuritis can occur it is quite common uh, the neuritis can be either silent or overt and there may or may not be any sudden onset of muscle paralysis and also there is pain and tenderness if the pain and tenderness is severe and following the neuritis there is any paralysis or anesthesia then we can consider this as a severe reaction new lesions may appear but remember in type 1 lepra reaction the existing lesion show the changes systematic complaints are uncommon you will see that in type 2 lepra reaction these are quite common necrosis and ulceration are seen rarely in severe reaction we, we already mentioned that uh, sometimes uh, following the pain and tenderness there can be paralysis of the muscle in severe reaction also in severe reaction we can come across some necrosis and ulceration uh, in the skin so these are two images uh, these are probably the existing lesions which have uh, changed in appearance so they have become uh, erythematous you can see this is kind of reddish and a little bit uh, swelled uh, also some uh, scaling can be seen here there are some scale formation uh, in the lesions in type 1 lepra reaction so these are the examples of type 1 lepra reaction now let us look at the uh, clinical features overall in skin the existing lesions suddenly become red swollen warm and tender new lesions may appear and lesions when subsiding may show scales as i mentioned in the previous picture you can see some scales are there so it is possible that the scales may appear when the lesions are subsiding what about nerve involvement nerve close to the skin may become enlarged tender and painful which are the features of neuritis and there may or may not be any loss of nerve function other organ involvement and general symptoms are not very common in type 1 lepra reaction so other organ involvement uh, is very rare and general symptoms are not very common what about the treatment if the reaction is mild and there is no nerve involvement then we give symptomatic management we give rest as well as analgesic that means to relieve the pain in form of aspirin or paracetamol but if there are signs of severe reaction in that case along with the rest and analgesic we may need to give corticosteroids ideally prednisolone is given and it is also important that the affected nerve is given some rest using splint in both cases uh, that means in mild or even severe reaction the multidrug therapy for leprosy should be continued it is not to be stopped now let us look at the schedule for prednisolone therapy in type 1 reaction so we start with 40 milligram once a day for the first two weeks then we lower the dose to 30 milligram once a day to uh, for the next two weeks after that 20 milligram once a day for the next two weeks uh, 15 milligram once a day for next two weeks then 10 milligram once a day for next two weeks and then 5 milligram once a day for next two weeks so you can see we have started with 40 milligram once a day and lowered the dose every two weeks up to the dose of 5 milligram once a day and this 
course is ideally 12 weeks long that means three months next we are going to talk about type 2 lepra reaction also known as erythema nodosum leprosum what is the mechanism the mechanism is antigen antibody reaction and it occurs due to circulating antibodies against mycobacterium lepri the uh, causative agent reacting with the mycobacterium lepri antigen again i'm not going into details about the immunology part uh, but to put it simply uh, it occurs due to the circulating antibody against the bacteria reacting with the existing antigen and causing the antigen antibody reaction it can be either intermittent or continuous if you remember in type 1 lepra reaction that this reaction are common in borderline diseases like borderline lepromatous borderline leprosy and borderline tubercular leprosy so blbb and bt but in case of type 2 lepra reaction it is more common among the lepromatous leprosy cases ll and the borderline lepromatous leprosy cases or bl existing skin patches do not show any change so what whatever skin uh, patches are there in the patient they do not show any change and this is uh, in contrast to the finding in type 1 lepra reaction where the existing skin patches change and they become reddish swelled sometimes ulceration can also form but here existing skin patches do not show any change rather new erythematous that means red firm painful tender nodules appear in crops so that is why this is called erythema nodosum leprosum so erythema nodosum means there are nodule formation and their erythematous red and they can be formed painful and tender generally these nodules are bilateral and symmetrical in distribution and in severe reaction they can also be ulcerated swelling of joints with systemic complaints like fever chills are common and other organ involvements like involvement of nerve muscle bone eye liver testis spleen may can also be there uh, this is in contrast to type 1 where the systemic uh, features as well as other organ involvements are not very common if you remember i will show you the table once again <clears throat> you can see other organ involvement they are rarely affected and general symptoms are not very common but these are quite common in type 2 lepra reaction these are some features if you look at uh, this particular three images you can see there are some nodules and they are reddish so erythematous probably tender or painful that is not possible to elicit in the diagram uh, and also some skin changes are here they are shiny these are the nodules you can see the nodules are present so what are the uh, clinical features overall skin red painful tender subcutaneous deep nodules which are known as erythema nodosum appear commonly on face arms and legs so uh, you can see here we have the trunk and also the arms and also probably the forearms we cannot say they appear in groups and subside within a few days even without treatment what about nerve involvement nerve may be affected but not as common or severe as in type 1 if you remember in type 1 nerve involvement is a very common feature neurotis is a very common feature along with that there can be some complications like ulceration in severe reaction but here in type 2 lepra reaction nerve involvement may occur but it is not as common as in type 1 other organ involvement are common more common than in type 1 so eyes joints bone testis kidney liver spleen etc can be affected and general symptoms like fever joint pains fatigue can also be there again general symptoms are not very common in type 1 what about treatment if the reaction is mild and there is no nerve involvement then uh, <coughs> what we do we give rest as well as analgesic uh, aspirin and paracetamol so this is exactly the same as the type 1 if there are signs of enl reaction then in addition to rest and analgesics corticosteroids and prednisolone is to be given here also we may need to give prednisolone if the nodules uh, are there and along with that along with the rest and analgesic we have to give the prednisolone 
we have already discussed the dose of prednisolone. Some other drugs which are given in type 2 reaction are as follows. Clofazimine. It is also effective for type 2 reaction but less potent than corticosteroid. So prednisolone is always preferred. Alternatively, you can give 300 milligram daily uh, in 3 divided doses. Uh, that means 100 milligram in 3 divided doses, uh, 3 times. So 100 milligram 3 times for maximum of 1 month and then the dose is tapered gradually to 100 milligram daily once maximum up to 12 months. So we start with 100 milligram 3 times and we lower the dose up to 100 milligram one time. What about thalidomide therapy? Ideally, this has to be given very cautiously. Like we cannot give it to the pregnant because we know about the uh, effect of the drug and uh, it can cause congenital malformation. It also has teratogenic effect, etc. Anyway, we start with 200 milligram twice daily. So basically 400 milligram daily in two divided doses or 100 milligram four times daily. This is also 400 milligram but here we are giving 100 milligram four times. Alternatively, we can give 200 milligram two times and then gradually tapered off. Chloroquine can also be given starting with 250 milligram three times daily for one week. Then for the next week, 250 milligram for two times and then 250 milligram one time. Like this, we can gradually reduce the dose of chloroquine. So these are the different drugs, clofazamine, thalidomide and chloroquine which can be given in type 2 reaction. The last one we are going to talk about is the Lucio phenomena. It is a complication of diffuse non-nodular lepromatous leprosy. It is a very rare phenomena. Initially, it was thought that Lucio phenomena is confined in, in the country of Mexico only where it was first discovered. But later on, uh, cases have been reported from other countries also. It is characterized by erythematous, irregular macules that become parapuric and then necrotic, usually developing on the distal lower limb. So, the, what are the skin changes here? We have the erythematous, irregular macules on the skin that become parapuric. That means it becomes darker in color and then becomes necrotic. And they are mostly present in the distal lower limbs. So, maybe uh, you know, below the knee joint. Upper limbs, trunks and face are subsequently involved. So, you know, other part of the body like upper limbs, trunk and face can also be involved. But first involvement is in the lower limbs. A secondary bacterial infection of the skin can occur and that can lead to septic shock. And there may be some extensive cutaneous involvement. Healing leave atrophic scars, but extensive tissue necrosis may require amputation. Sometimes the necrosis is so extensive it is quite impossible to save the limb or part of the body so the skin is completely damaged even even the underlying tissues are damaged so we may need some amputation here are some images of lucio phenomena you can see these are the uh, you know ulcers uh, these are the dark portion probably the necrotic tissues uh, so these are the lucio phenomena Treatment with multidrug therapy alone results in clinical improvement and healing of the tissue. So, the multidrug therapy has to be continued and they show very promising result. They can show clinical improvement and sometimes the tissues are healed. But if there is severe exfoliating lesions, then additional supportive treatment may be necessary. And in case of extensive necrosis, we may need surgical debridement and if the tissues are already dead that means non-viable then we may have to go for amputation also so this is all about lucio phenomena we have today discussed the type 1 and type 2 lepra reaction and also a little bit about the lucio phenomena if you like the video please subscribe to our channel and share this video with your batchmates juniors and friends from other colleges we also have our Facebook page that you can follow. The link is given in the description. Take care and we shall see you in our next video.